Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of my React tutorial series. In this video, we are going to talk about what components are and there are two types of React components. I will also show you the differences between them and how to create them in this video. Components are an important part of learning React because while developing React applications, you are going to need them. So that's why this video is a little bit important than the previous ones. I suggest you to follow this carefully and now let's get started. A component is something that allows us to divide the user interface into smaller pieces. So a component is small, a small part of the UI. It is an independent code block, which has its own JavaScript and CSS files. And more importantly, components are reusable. So basically we create a component once, but we can use it as many times as we want. And since components make development much easier, all of the modern frameworks today, like Angular and Vue.js, they are also using this component model. So now what are React components? There are basically two ways to create a React component. And the first one is functional components. A functional component is a JavaScript function which returns JSX code. And the second type of a React component is a class component, which is actually a JavaScript ES6 class, which also returns JSX code inside a render function. Before, in the older versions of React, we have needed to write a lot of class components because they had other advantages over functional components. But today, this has changed, and I will explain it later in this video. Now let's jump to our code and create our first functional and class component. Okay, we are back to our code, and now let's create our first React component. Actually, we already have a component called app.js. Now this app.js is our root and only React component currently we have, which is rendering just a simple text. Now let's create our first component. To do that, we can create a new folder called components. And inside the components folder, I'm going to create a new file and let's name it title. Now the extension of this component can be .js or .jsx. You can use both of them, uh, whichever you like. Let's call it .jsx. And here I just need to define a JavaScript function named title. A component's naming convention should always start with a capital letter, like we did here. And this function is going to return a JSX code. Let's define here an h2 tag. And let's write inside my first functional component. If we create and save a component like this, we see that nothing has changed here because we haven't called our component yet. And in order to use it somewhere else, first of all, I need to export the function. Okay, now we will be able to use this component somewhere else in our source code. And there is another little information I would like to give. In older versions of React, you always had to import React from, from the React package to define a component. So if you are working maybe in an older project, you will probably see these imports, but in the newer versions of React, you don't have to do, do this anymore. Okay, now this is basically our functional component. And now let's call it inside our app component. And to call a function, we just need to write, let's say under this div, the name of the function like an HTML tag, like title. It's also imported automatically and just self-close the tag. Now, when I save this, we should see the new string tag, exactly. Let's also inspect this. And now we see that directly here under the div tag, we can see the h2 tag, which is actually our title component. So this is how we can create a functional component, but there are also other ways, if you prefer, you can use an ES6 arrow function. Let's close this. So let me also show that. I just need to define here a constant named title and to convert it as an arrow function like this. 
and save it again. And as we can see, our component is still there and working. So this is the arrow function way. If you prefer, you can also create your functional components as arrow functions. Now, there is also a second type, as I have mentioned at the beginning of this video, which are the class components. For class components, however, the syntax is a little bit different. First of all, I need to use the class keyword. And secondly, to make it a class component, we need to extend the component package from React. And to do that, first of all, we need to, we still need to import the React package, even if we don't need to do that anymore for the functional components, as I mentioned before. But for the class components, we still need to do that because we are going to use the component package from React. So now this will be accepted as a class component. There is just one more thing we need to do. Since this is a JavaScript class, we cannot return something directly. We need to do that inside a method called render. So if you are going to use a class component, you also have to use a render method. And there inside, you can return your JSX code. And now this is not functional. This will be a class component. Okay, now save it and let's try again. Refresh. And as we can see, this time we have returned our JSX code as a class component. So this is an example of a class component. Now, one of the most asked questions uh, about React components is that what is the difference between functional and class components? So the main difference between the functional and class components were before the React version 16.8 is that if we only want to render something uh, on the page, then we had used the functional components. But if we needed to do some logical operations or some data management, then we had to use the class components before the React version 16.8 because it was not possible to do that with functional components. So functional components were only being used to render something to the page. And for more logical operations or some data management, then we had to use class components. But this has changed after React version 16.8 because React has published something called React hooks. And what hooks do is that they basically give the power to the functional components, what we couldn't do before. We could do that before with class components. Now, by using React hooks, we will also be able to do the same thing with functional components as well, like data management or using the components for more logical operations. So that's why it's not necessary anymore to use class components in React. But if you are working in an older project, maybe, then you might probably still see class components, but it's actually not recommended to use them anymore. What recommended is to use functional components with, uh, with the power of React hooks. But um, I won't dive into React hooks in this video because it will be much more complicated for you. Let's just keep React hooks for another video. So before closing, there is one more thing I would like to show, which I mentioned at the beginning of this video, which is that components are reusable. And if you prefer, you can use it as many times as you want. So this is a very big advantage of using components. You just create it once and you can use it later as many times as you want. Now, in the next episode, I would like to change their styling a little bit with CSS. You are going to learn how to do that in a couple of ways. So stay tuned for the next video and thank you guys for watching.